Hello, it's Scott Manley here again, and after my series on unmanned um, rockets, I had a whole bunch of comments from smart rocket scientists who thought they had great ideas. Now, the one that stood out that I want to specifically address is the person that said, why not put the rockets at the front uh, so that the rest of the rocket hangs down at the back and keeps everything vertical? Now, that is a very good question, a question which... Uh, was in fact asked by one of the great grandfathers of rocket science, Robert Goddard. The idea was that with polar rockets, it would behave like a pendulum. And what would happen again is that gravity would pull the whole thing down. Well, here we have such a device. And as you can see, gravity is not actually pulling the bottom back down. And the reason is gravitation is universal. The whole vehicle is affected equally by gravitation. The only other force on this is the rockets, and the rockets are firing along a fixed vector. So, there is no net torque that will turn the vehicle one way or another from the pendulum effect. And so, you see, this is no better than a completely unguided rocket without fins or anything. So you might as well put all your rockets at the bottom where the plumbing is easier. Now, as I said, even Robert Goddard thought this was a good idea. There is a great photo of him next to one of his test rockets uh, in 1926, which was designed to follow this principle. And of course, it took off and promptly fell over and crashed. However, in experimenting, I did discover an interesting feature um, of the physics engine, or at least an interesting design. When I took the, the engines and instead of mounting them directly to the fuel tank, I mounted them on pylons. Now the pylons are somewhat flexible. On several occasions, in fact many occasions, every time I flew it, it would tilt over right away. But over time, it would learn to right itself. It would also start spinning, but the whole point is that the, the important thing is that it would actually start to right itself and get itself more vertical. So. Something in the interaction between the forces in the game was causing these engines to flex preferentially towards the ground and thereby direct the whole vehicle upwards towards a, a vertical position. As you can see here, it's kind of magic. I mean, you take away the pylons and it doesn't work. You put them back on and it flies great. Um, I tried putting these on even longer pylons and, and I got a rocket that did indeed fly off to escape velocity. So there, look at that, it practically learns to spin itself. No controls on this or anything. So yeah, one other thing that people suggested was, hey, why don't you put SAS units on it? Well, uh, if you don't know, SAS units can fail to function after you have detached them from the main rocket. And if you have control surfaces that were active, when uh, they detach, they are stuck in that configuration. So you make your rocket basically frozen into one aerodynamic state, which will typically cause it to curve over and crash into the ground with great speed. Anyway, the whole um, pendulum rocket um, thing, you can go on the internet and search for pendulum rocket fallacy. And this actually explains a few examples, including Robert Goddard. It also talks about the escape tower from the Apollo missions and points out that to make that functional they actually had to add several hundred kilos of depleted uranium in the nose to shift the center of mass sufficiently far forward that it would act as a stable rocket. Without that it would be unstable and would probably be an escape to doom. But anyway there we go that's a pendulum fallacy for you. Any more bright ideas? Ask me about them, maybe I'll make a video about those too. This is Scott Manley, Fly Safe.